Hey everyone and welcome to the start of another reading vlog. So it is currently Friday lunchtime and I have not vlogged this week so this is probably going to be a weekend reading vlog rather than a weekly reading vlog but I did want to vlog this week because a lot has been happening and I wanted to talk about it so I uh, shall I start with the bad news? The bad news is that my fridge broke this week so yeah not happy about that. I've ordered a new one which isn't being delivered for I think two weeks so don't know how I'm going to cope <laughs> over the next couple of weeks but yeah that was the bad news this week. The good news is that I started my new job on Monday and it's going well so far I think. I mean it's not going badly, I'm enjoying it, everyone seems really really lovely and so yeah really happy <laughs> about that obviously. I was working from the office on Monday and Tuesday and with my new commute I have a 30 minute walk to the train station in the morning and then a 30 minute walk home in the evening so an hour walking time in total and then it's a 40 minute train journey into the city centre so even though I've been quite tired this week I have still had time to read so I thought I would go through what I'm currently reading which is so what what what, what do I start with so I'm currently listening to The Amber Spyglass by Philip Pullman which is book three in the His Dark Materials trilogy I have read this series before, it was one of my favourite series when I was a kid. Obviously I can't say much about the plot for the third book, but it's a very surreal experience reading this series as an adult because there's certain things that I remember, but then there's certain themes that I don't remember. So I knew that there were angels in this series and I knew that it was fairly religious, but there was certain things that I just didn't pick up on <laughs> when I was a kid. But yeah, I am really enjoying the audiobook for this. I think I'm about halfway through it now and I like the narration because the main narration is done by the author Philip Pullman but then there's also voice actors that are doing the dialogue and so it feels very immersive and I'm yeah enjoying it so far. I would recommend it. I actually managed to get it through my library app. I don't know if it's available on Scribd but it is available through BorrowBox which is the app that my library uses. So that's the audiobook that I'm currently reading. In. I am also about 60% of the way through The Bone Shard Emperor by Andrea Stewart which is book two in the Drowning Empire trilogy or series. I think that's the name of the series anyway. The first book is The Bone Shard Daughter which I read earlier this year and I was really surprised actually by how much I enjoyed it. It's an adult fantasy that is set in this world where you have all of these different islands and there's a really really interesting magic system the Emperor uses bone shard magic to create these animal-like constructs and they help him to maintain the law and order and there's a few different perspectives that you're following. There's two main perspectives so one of the main perspectives is the Emperor's daughter Lin and she has been having memory issues and her father has turned around to her and said that he's not going to recognise her as his heir unless she can learn or remember how to use bone shard magic. The second main perspective is a guy called Jovis who's a smuggler and in the first book he's on this quest to try and find out what happened to his wife who went missing many many years ago. There's also a couple of other perspectives so the politics of this world essentially a lot of people aren't happy with the way that the Emperor is currently running things and with the way the bone shards are being collected. I'm trying to be very vague because I think a lot of my enjoyment with the first book came from learning about the magic system and learning about the world because I think that the world building in this series has been done really really well. I have enjoyed this second book so far but I will say that the pacing has felt a little off in places. One of my favourite things about the first book though was the animal companion relationship and I don't feel like we're getting as much of that in this second book. I also feel like there's been more of a focus on building another relationship 
and I, yeah, I don't know how I feel about it. I feel like I still need to read the rest of the book. Obviously, I've got 40% left to go. I don't hate it. I just think that there are certain relationships within this story that I'm more invested in and they're not being shown because there is more of a focus on building other relationships. But I do like that this series, at least with the first book, it went in a direction that I was not expecting at all. And so I'm hoping that we get something similar with the end of the second book. I am hoping to get plenty of reading done tonight though, because I'm going to be joining Sprints on Hugo's channel. So Hugo from Scientist Reading World. I'll leave a link to his channel in the description if you would like to check it out. But yeah, I think that's everything that I wanted to say in this intro. I also had my vitamin B12 jab yesterday, which I don't know if I've mentioned actually in a vlog, but I found out recently that I have a vitamin B12 deficiency so I had to have my first jab yesterday and it's surprising how much more energy I feel like I have so yeah hopefully it's going to be a good weekend <laughs> Good morning and a happy Saturday. So last night I read about 20% of the Bone Shard Emperor while I was on sprints and I feel like throughout this book we've been building up to something and I think that that something is about to happen and so I think that I paused at the right moment because I want to focus on the end of this book just because I'm interested to see what direction it's going to go in and how certain events are going to unfold. Old. There's something about this series that is stopping me from getting that five star feeling and I can't work out what it is but I think it's the writing maybe or the pacing. An example I can think of is where a character will make a decision and that decision will make sense for who they are as a character but I won't be able to follow 100% the journey that we take to get to them making that decision. Does that make sense? Like they'll be thinking that they're going to do something and then they'll do it. There won't be any build up and so it's a little bit jarring in places. That would probably be my only real criticism. I still love the characters though and I still love the world and I still find the magic really interesting. We have learned a little more about the magic in this book which I've also really enjoyed. Still have some questions though which I'm hoping will be answered in this final part because I really don't know how it's going to end. The ending to the first book, I might have said this already, really, really surprised me. So I'm hoping for some more surprises. But yeah, I am hoping to finish The Bone Shard Emperor today because the only thing I have planned today is that I'm going out for lunch with my nan in a bit. And then I also want to watch episode three of The Wheel of Time. So I watched the first two episodes last night and enjoyed them. I don't feel 100% invested yet because I am following what's going on but also I haven't read the books and so I feel like I don't have anything to compare it to obviously. I like the cinematography, is that the right word? I like the whole scenery and the actual setting, it feels very fantastical and I like the characters so far, can't remember any of their names but I'm intrigued, like it, it's just okay so far. Still haven't decided whether I'm actually ever gonna read the Wheel of Time series because it's such a long series and I know that it's going to take so much time and I just don't know if I have the patience so that's why I'm just going to go ahead and watch the TV show. I don't mind having spoilers or anything like that. I feel like I might have said this in a video before but I always find that when a TV adaptation is coming out where I haven't read the books I always prefer to watch the TV show first because I find that if I do it the other way around, there's a possibility that I'm going to be disappointed by the TV show. Whereas if I watch the TV show first and I enjoy it, then I go back and read the books, then I'm more likely to enjoy both because I'm not comparing. I feel like this is going to be a really, really rambly vlog because I have no idea what I have said in this update, but I am going to go and carry on getting ready because I need to go and pick my nan up and and then I will catch up with you when I have reading updates. <laughs> you see her walking down the boulevard. She got the posture of a superstar. 
she looks so fly in those Gucci slides. Yeah, yeah, I wonder where she hides under her disguise. So it's now four o'clock and I haven't read anything yet today, but I thought I would do a quick update because on my way home from lunch, I popped into the library to pick up a book that I reserved, which I thought I would show you. So I picked up The Song Rising by Samantha Shannon, which is the third book in the Bone Season series. I'm really hoping that this is the third book because it looks quite short and I'm not sure what to make of that because The Mime Order, which is book two, was over 500 pages. And how long is this? It's like 360 something pages. So a lot shorter than I was expecting it to be, but I'm hoping I can fit this onto my December TBR, especially now that I've seen that it's quite short. It should be a quicker read because the first two books in this series were really quick reads for me. They're really, really fast paced. So really excited about that. And then I also yesterday popped into Sainsbury's to pick up a clothing order that I made online. So I thought I would show you what I got because it's really, really cute. I mean, I think it's really, really cute. You might not think it's really, really cute, but I thought I would show it anyway. So I have a bit of an obsession with Christmas jumpers. And when I saw this Christmas sweater, I knew that I needed to have it because look at it. So cute. It says Merry Force Be With You, which I think is just so cool. And it looks really, really bright pink on the monitor. It's not that pink, it's like a pastel pink, but it's so, so cute and I'm so excited. I am honestly so excited for it to be December because I have a whole box of Christmas jumpers that I really want to start wearing again. I look forward to it every year that I can get out my box of Christmas jumpers. I think it was last year or the year before. I basically did a whole month where all I wore was Christmas jumpers. So that gives you a bit of an indication of how many Christmas jumpers I actually own. But yeah, really, really happy with that. It's so, so cute. And then I also bought, what else did I buy actually? Oh, I bought myself some new trainers, which I don't know if they're that exciting, but I bought some new just trainers for like walking around in. I just had a quick look in the bag to see what else it was that I ordered and I realised that it was my mum's Christmas present. So I can't show you that because I know that my mum does sometimes watch my vlogs. But otherwise, I have a really nice day today. It was nice to catch up with my nan at lunch. And then when I popped into town, it was nice to just have a little mooch around. They have this Christmas market on at the moment that's mostly food stores. And so I didn't really look too closely because I just had my lunch, but it was nice. It was, yeah, festive. I feel like I am starting to get into the festive mood. So that's good, even though it's not even December yet. It's what, the 20th of November? And I never really feel like it's Christmas until my birthday's out of the way because my birthday is the week before Christmas. And so when I was little, I used to insist that the Christmas tree wasn't allowed to go up until after my birthday because it took the attention away from my birthday, which was kind of selfish of me actually looking back but I don't know why I'm rambling about Christmas now. I told you this was gonna be a rambly reading vlog, but I am actually gonna do some reading now. So I will let you know once I have finished The Bone Shard Emperor, because yes, I'm really excited to finish it. I keep getting distracted, but I'm gonna actually focus now and get some reading done. So I finished reading The Bone Shard Emperor and this came out as a four stars in Core Pile, which is the same rating that I gave the first book in this series. And I think it's more like a 3.5 and I felt a similar way actually about the first book because throughout the book I felt like it was somewhere between a three and a four stars but then I really liked the ending and so that made me want to bump up my score. It's really really difficult because I think that this book in particular had a few pacing issues. I felt like it was a lot slower than the first book. I liked the way that things were wrapped up in the end but still I have a few questions that I'm assuming are going to be answered in the next book. I think this is a trilogy. I'm pretty sure that I think originally I thought this was going to be a duology, but I'm sure I looked it up and there is going to be a third book. What I do like though about this series is how there are two main perspectives that are told in the first person point of view, and then there are a few other perspectives that are told in third person. And I really like that because I think it helps just to distinguish between the characters. And I like that I like all of the perspectives 
within this story. So there's never a point where I'll get to a chapter and see whose point of view it's told from and think, oh, I can't be bothered with this. I don't like this character. Like that doesn't happen at all. And I get that sometimes with multi POV stories, but I like all of the perspectives in this series. And I do think that they each contribute something to the main story. There's also really good LGBTQ plus rep. And I really like the way that the society has been built. So it's quite clear just from certain conversations that there's no prejudice and that it's just accepted that people are gonna be with whoever they wanna be. It was made quite clear actually in the first book that people don't make assumptions about anyone's sexuality. And I really, really like the way that that has been built into the society. There were a few new characters that were introduced in this book that I think could have had a little more development. And one character in particular, I think could have been introduced a little bit earlier because by the time they were introduced, I didn't feel like I really got to know them very well. And I, yeah, I'm interested to see how things are gonna turn out in the next book. That's all I can really say, I think, without spoilers. But overall, I think I would still recommend this series. I'm really excited for the third book, but I think that what I'm going to do is before the third book comes out, I'm going to go back and reread the first and second book because I do think that there are a few things from the first book that I'd forgotten that meant that when they were referenced again in this second book, it took me a while to grasp what the characters were talking about. And so I think that I would benefit from having a reread before I read the third book whenever that comes out. But I think that is everything that I wanted to say. I don't have a lot planned for the rest of today. I need to sort out the chaos that is my house. So I might listen to my audiobook actually for a bit this afternoon while I do some cleaning. And then I also want to do some more video planning. So I've started planning out the videos that I want to do for my end of year content. So favourites and least favourites and things like that. I was thinking that I might do a video series where I talk about my favourite books of the year because I've read a lot of books <laughs> this year and I don't think I can narrow it down to fit into one video. So I was thinking I might do a video that's my favourite fantasy series and then a video that's my favourite thrillers of the year and then another video on my favourite romances and so on and so on. So yeah I think I'm going to do some more planning with that today and then I'm going around to my mum's this evening to watch Bake Off which I'm really excited about even though I already know who goes this week because spoilers on social media which is a little bit annoying but also my fault because I've left it nearly a week <laughs> to watch watching the episode. But yeah, I'm going to stop rambling and say thanks for watching for making it this far. Let me know in the comments what you've been reading this week. And don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and click subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you next time. Bye! <laughs>